and welcome. I'm John and this is Unique Wargaming Terrain. Right guys, last week's build, the ruins to add to the kill team board, absolutely fantastic. It's a big board now. It's uh, 30 inches by 33 inches. So it's, it's, it's quite big now. That's just for six, six boards. We're gonna add two more boards this week. We're gonna go for trenches. So guys, if you're new to the channel, Sit back, enjoy, because this is a very simple build. And if you like this one, you go back and look at some of the other videos. If you're a regular here, guys, I feel the love. 25 subscribers. We're getting there. So sit back, enjoy. I'll see you in a second. Right, guys, so the first thing I want to talk about before I start getting into the build I had a question about these, these L, okay, these L shapes I have. These are space dividers, okay. Now, if you go to a supermarket, don't go and take. If you guys go to a supermarket, befriend someone on the, the fruit and veg section and ask them, show them, show them this and ask them if they, can, if they come across these, if they can keep hold of them, okay, for you. Just... You know, you, you'll amass a lot very quickly. Now, they don't come in every single box. They usually come in loose bananas, pineapple sometimes, sometimes mangoes, but the pineapple and the mango one is usually yay big, okay? A lot smaller, which is great. These are absolutely fantastic for lots of different things, which I'll be covering on the channel as we go on. So just, you know, speak to someone in the supermarket, see if they can help you out. Also, in a supermarket, as you're going along, you'll see a little, little stand on the corner end of, end of one of the aisles. Sometimes when they come in, they come in not with these, but another version is, but a cardboard one. It's usually like three foot or so. So, a friend, friend, friend someone in the supermarket that works on a fruit and veg and say to them, look, this is what I do. This is what I'm after. Can you keep an eye out? And if you come across them, grab them for me, yeah? That's, now, so that's, that's what they are. Okay, now I don't know anywhere where you can order these from, so you couldn't order it from a company or whatever, but I've got a shed loads here. So if you want some, chuck me a message below and we'll figure a way of, you know, talking on Messenger or something like that, and I'll, I'll send you some, okay? Something else that has brought to my attention. <laughs> For some reason, if you watch my videos and you have subtitles on, no volume, just subtitles on, I'll be talking about something and the subtitles gives you something totally different. Okay, so if you're able to turn the subtitles on, watch the video first, then go back and turn the subtitles on and have a watch again. Because I was being told that you're talking about trains. Why are you talking about trains? No, I'm talking about terrain. Why are you talking about balls? No, I'm not talking about balls. I'm talking about this. <laughs> so just, I was told it's, it's comical. So just, you know, anyway. So first thing I do, I'm going to cut one of these balls down. And then we're gonna look for the trenches, but I'm gonna be using these for trenches. Now, if you can't, if you can't get hold of these, okay, or you can't get a card version or anything like that, you could. I'm going to the box again, but you could try and take a piece of the box, okay? So then you've got like a small L shape. This one's not good for what I'm talking about because it's got this side panel on the top panel. But you, if you can get a, a corner like this, when I say like this, this card in this corner. It isn't one piece of card and another piece of card, it's, it goes all the way around, okay? So even if I cut this off, I could probably use this, just cut a piece and cut a piece to give me that shape, yeah? Okay, and then I could use that. So if you can't get hold of the space dividers, that's another way you could you could do it, okay? So guys, I'll see you in a second. Okay, guys. So what I've done is I've put these on to just my tile, and I've got a pen, I've measured the distance, and I've drawn around it, okay? So I've got something like that. So I know this line here is the edge of one. That line there is the edge of one. Now the plan is to have them on, have a little gap there so I can put a little piece of sprue so I can run the planks across, okay? So that's where I'm at, I'm gonna hot glue this and I'll show you afterwards. Right guys, so I've hot glued it, okay, as you can see, yeah, 
So that's the basic trench. Before you, some of you are gonna say, oh John, but the trench seems to be down. This is where we, now what we'll do is we build up this side, okay? And this side. And well, I might actually just fill the middle first, do the, the, the woodwork on it first, and then, so I'm not trying to squeeze in, there's big stuff hanging over. So that's, that's what we're gonna do next. So do the woodwork and then go on to that. Now for the woodwork, what you're gonna need, you can, you can use a bit of foam board if you want and just score it to make uh, wood. But I find the easiest way to do it is get yourself a packet of lolly sticks. You can get them from a pound shop or a deal shop or something like that, for a pound, a dollar, a euro fifty, something like that. And you get like a hundred lolly sticks. <laughs> so for so for a euro fifty, you'll get a hundred lolly sticks. That's like one cent, one point five cent each. You know, with the lolly stick, you have to snip two ends off to make a plank, and you just glue the planks on. But what I want to do along here. I'm gonna put a little bit of sprue, cut and, and not glue it along, okay? Just, just along here. So I'm gonna put the planks on, the planks come up near enough flush with the edge. So when I put them up against each other, they're gonna be, the planks are gonna be, two pieces, the planks are gonna be almost flush, okay? So that's what I'm gonna get onto cutting all those lolly sticks. <laughs> I'll see you in a second, guys. Guys, so this is, this is dry fit. This is what I've basically done so far, okay? So, cut a piece of card to go on the edge here, all right? Now, the idea is when I put the planks across there, this is gonna support the planks. So, the planks will come near enough flush to the edge. So, when I line them up with the other uh, trench, it's gonna line up nice. And when you're looking at the wood, if you were just standing and looking straight down like that, it would be a bit, uh, a bit wavy. And that's how it would be in real life. Now, these bits here, um, at the beginning of this adventure of making these boards, I experimented with expanding foam to make a gaming board. And these pieces are all bits from there. So I've just cut them down, shaped them down just to fit along to make a nice little trench. Okay. I've beveled the edges as, as, along as well. Now, obviously, look, there's a bit of movement in there. That's not stuck down or nothing. It's just a dry fitting. I'm starting to glue the other one down and I'll be back to you in a second. Okay, so I've hot glued it all down. Okay, as you can see, it's looking nice. Now, there's a new there's a new feature on the camera I've discovered, so I'm gonna just check that out for a second. So if it goes a bit weird, I do apologise, but I'm just gonna test it out for a second. But there's the first one. Okay, I'm gonna check that thing now. Right, there's the second one. I think it's to do with transitions actually. I think that's what I think that is. Hmm. Something new I've learned. <laughs> okay, so there's the first one, there's there's the second one, and they should line up. Look at that. Near enough millimeter perfect. Sorry, the lights are reflecting off it because it's all white still. So what I need to do now, I need to fill a mix. Fill it. Yeah, I'm going to should I fill a mix first or should I tile it all first? When I say tile it, I mean uh, wooden plank wooden planks inside the trench. Now, of course I've got them all over here. Right, let me just test out the new function again. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I like that new function I discovered, right. So I've got lolly six. okay. Now these are not the usual type that I buy. The usual type that I buy are the ones you get uh, on your lolly, lolly sticks, ice cream and all that. And the ones I usually get are from a pound shop, for like a euro 50 or something like that. I say a pound shop, and they're called a euro, euro stretch or pound land or something like that. But in the Republic of Ireland, they're a euro 50. I don't know why, but most of you be able to get from a pound shop or from a dollar store or something like that. But the ones I get usually have the wood ingrained on it. So it's all wood, but when you chuck a bit of paint on it and then chuck another colour on it to dry brush it, it really just pops with very little effort. Now these look like they don't have the same thing on. Oh no, they do. It's just not as defined. Hmm. I smell of wood. <laughs> Fresh wood. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do with these, I'm gonna snip the ends, use my clippers to snip the ends, and then, I'm gonna, then I've got planks. And then I'm going to start to glue the planks. Now, with the planks, I'll probably put it on time lapse so you can see it, so it just makes it a bit easier for you. I'm going to glue it so it's flush, relatively flush within a millimetre of this edge. Okay. 
and run it along. So it's going to have a little lip here, but that's okay because when you look at trenches in wartime anyway, they're not perfectly flat and they're not perfectly straight. They curve off a little bit, they go up a little bit, down a little bit. So it's good. Now you could filler mix this in here. The problem with filler mixing is it's not going to be flat enough to put models on. You're going to have models that are sort of slightly tilted. So I think the best way to do it is to do the wood. Not only that, when I do the stonework on, on here, the groundwork on it, the wood's going to contrast all of that. So I'm going to paint this, the uh, actual trench bit, that, that's exposed to silver, and maybe a bit of, bit of copper or something like that. But the woodwork is then going to contrast that. That's going to contrast the stone, and it's going to look absolutely amazing. Guys, I'll see you in a second. Right. One quick thing I forgot to say, guys. When you take the ends off, okay, you don't need to do it, let me measure it minimum perfect, just get a rough, yeah, look how I've got rough, you won't cut through, but you indent it, you got to cut the, oh, I did cut through, <laughs> it's just broken, oh, oh well, that's not what I was going to show you, what I was going to say to you is, it's probably because they're bigger ones, when you snip the end off, don't throw them away, okay, See how, see how, where are we? No, you can't see them, they're in there. See how they're in there, yeah? Those little bits are perfect for shingles for roofing, for fantasy buildings. And I usually keep them. But uh, obviously these ones are bigger. So they're gonna fly around the place. So, back to it guys. Um, I was meant to time lapse and I totally forgot and I just got carried away guys, I do apologize. One thing, one thing I discovered is when I clipped it and just cocked it up there. Use the fat side, you clip the end. And if you twist it, it will come off. Now, it's not going to give you a perfect cut. But, you know, as you can see, okay. And you see the gaps between here at the moment. You can notice them between the wood and, and the plastic. You notice them because the boards are lighter. Once this is all undercoated black, you won't even see those. And you could, if you really wanted to, fill down some bits of gravel or bits of you know, ash from the fire or, or something like that. So all I need to do now is just take all the wispy bits off and then fill and mix the whole thing, okay? The little joins in between here. Let me see if we can get into the thing there. The little join along there, just to fill and mix in there. Just to mix along the edge here, okay? And just fix those on the fire. Now, this bit here, okay, there was a big air bubble in there. See, there's a few here and there. But there's a big one here, so I just said instead of trying to fill, uh, put filler in there, fill that filler mix, that's, you know, that's what its job would be. I thought, let me just cut a piece of an off cut piece and just hot glue it on so that's there's a bit more texture to it and everything else. So I'm going to get on with filler mixing this and this one. When that's dry, I'm going to only cut the whole thing black and then going to do some base colours on it and everything else. And I'll I'll try and remember to put it on time lapse so you can see me painting it, but. You know, not to worry, guys. See you in a second. All right, guys. So I'm at the dry brushing stage. It's a bit too close to it. Let me move that back. It's out of the way. Just move this back a little bit. Now, as you can see, there are a few bits under here that are a bit white still. It's not... I can't get the spray in there. So it's not a big issue. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a light dry brush of sterling and drab. Okay. A bit too much in there, but... Just try and then do a dry blend. Now, what I mean by a dry blend, it's a dry brush blend basically. So I've got the, br the brush is dry and dry brush in silicon drab. And when I've done all this silicon drab, what I do then is get a lighter color. I'm going to go for a screaming skull, okay? And I'll put some on the paper and then dry brush them together to give me a lighter, like a really light um, brown. And then try and use that to just blend it all in. There's a few spots that I missed with the spray, so I do apologise. It's not going to let anything down because you're going to still going to see an amazing piece. So it's just just the bits that are underneath that I've sort of missed. So I'm going to give that not a heavy dry brush with the still in drab, but just going to give it a more of a still in drab paint onto it. And then as that's drying, I'm going to dry do a mix um, a dry brush blend. 
with the steel losing drag and the screaming skull just to lighten it up so any bits of white that are still coming through blend in and I'll show you what I mean in a second Even the wood the only thing with the wood the holly sticks these ones particularly there's not much texture on them they look like there was like texture but there's not that much when I'm dry brushing it it's still nice enough but not as nice as I would have, have wanted it so what I would what I would have done what I would do next time I use these bigger ones is I'll do a couple of little um, indentations on them a couple of get a wire brush and just run it along it to give it a couple of deep uh, gouges and stuff like that so when I do dry brush it it does pop pretty well I mean it still looks nice right so now I'm at a stage where I'm almost out of paint on the brush and there's very little paint here so now I'm going to go for the mixed the blend dry brush I'm going to get some Screw this go on there. I'm going to mix it in with the bit that I have on here. Okay. I'll show you what I mean. So there's there's the screw skull. And you can see the light lets me. You see it gets darker, so it's almost blended together. It sort of turns it's like a, a milky coffee colour. And then just try and get in there, just try and Give that a little. Oh, sorry, just not the camera. <laughs> and then just bring it around. Give it a nice little. And as you go along, as I'm going along, I'm going to go further back into the dark of the the mix on the paper. Yeah. So I go from lighter to darker. This is nice as well because it. Uh, as I'm dry brushing it, it's giving it a couple of extra different tones in the colour. Let me spin this around. Okay. Let's see how it's, that's looking nice. Okay, so it goes from that end. See how light that is. Okay. And as you can follow it down, it's starting to go, as you follow it down, it's starting to go darker. But this, see this bit under here, look. So I'm just going to give that that lighter tone, quick, well, sorry, the lighter tone, but the blend. Now, this side, you can see that on one side, the other side isn't done. So I'm going to start. And the good thing with Steel Leasing Drab and Screaming Skull is they're both layer paints, okay? So they both react the same way. Whereas if one of them was a contrast paint and one was a layer paint, it'd be a different reaction. Or if one was a base base coat and the other one was a layer paint, it would it would work, mess up a little bit. You still, still get an effect, but it wouldn't be your desired effect. Because the base coat, your own base coat is designed to be one possibly two thin coats and that covers the colour up whereas the layer paint is to it goes on bright dulls itself down a bit and it's for you to bring up the layers in different areas to make it look nice and to give you different shading and stuff like that with very little effort damage that corner there And now I'm going to start adding just still leaving drab, darken it down a bit. You know, you may not be able to see clearly because they're lighting nothing else, but when I come to pretty pictures, you'll see what I mean. But I'll try and show you if I remember. I get so excited when I get to that point. Oh, yeah, look at this, look at that. Oh, yeah, I like this, I like that. And I just forget I'm meant to be showing you certain aspects of it. <laughs> so 
I do apologise guys, I just get too, too excited, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to the models and stuff, I get really excited, but when I make an amazing piece of terrain like this, very, very simple, I just get so, I'm so pleased with myself and like, over the top excited. Right, let me just show you this, this bottom corner, you see, I've just I damaged it. Now, I think what that was, was a little bit of filling mix hanging over and as I've turned it around, it's just knocked it off. So now what we do is just gonna, I'm gonna dab it in, this all these in drab. And then start dry brushing all around it. Just to get rid of it. I'll show you in a sec. Yeah, you see it looks a little bit lighter, but it's not that bad. It's just nice and easy salvageable. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely so simple and so amazing. Just need to clean my brush. Right, so what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna tidy up here. I'm gonna move some of this stuff around and then I'm going to uh, give you some pretty pictures and some close-ups. And um, I'm, I, I can guarantee you're going to like it. So, guys, I'll see you in a second. Hey, guys. So, here we are. Okay. Now, ignore the white one because I haven't undercoated that yet. Okay. That's not been... I, I've shown you Brucey bonus on this one for that one. Let me get the door open. Sorry, guys. Let's put a light in here. There we go. Look at that. And that's nine tiles. Okay. That is... Now, this one board is six tiles, so there's only three tiles, the two trenches and the white one, from this other uh, second sheet. I've still got a couple of boards down there to do, so but there's gonna be plain, they're just going to be plain ones. So I didn't work too much on them because I ran out of filling mix, so I was like, okay, I forgot to get some, so I'll get some of that tomorrow and just do those quickly. But here's the trenches. Uh, look at that. Now you can see there's a few little bits of white. Just put my finger in there. It's not the end of the world. You know, it's not the end of the world. See this bit down here, look. Now, from what I can see with my eye, it looks different to what it's on camera. The camera looks really bright, but it's not actually that bright. Okay. Let's see, with this stone, this is this is the bit I put on top to hold, uh, get rid of the hole. But this is where I've done a lot of the uh, dry blending. Okay, just to... Uh, Lighten the stone up, make it look like stone, but then blend it into the dirt. You see along the bottom here, yeah. Now that that is just amazing. It's <laughs> absolutely amazing, you know. And are you ready for this? Boom! By moving a few pieces, look how much the, the battlefield changed. Okay, it's just insane. There we go. It's n lovely. So simple. Now, I didn't move the trenches. You know, just I don't see the point of moving them anywhere. But you can see, you can have them there. You can have them in the middle. You can have them on the other side. Now, eventually, I'm going to have enough pieces to have the biggest size 40k balls you can have. Okay? And it's I've done a little bit of maths on it, and it's going to work, work out around 25 euros. For that bald yeah i say that bald i mean bald again there's so much you can do with it which i'm going to get back onto in a second i just need to sort that pile of mess out there <laughs> guys i'll see you in a second guys second time filming this section because the light kept out of the door open and light kept bright and not dark and everything else so i said okay let me just do this bit again 
Anyway, this is so simple. I, I love it. I, it's actually, it's all because of my failed heel that it gave me this idea to do this and the failed expanding foam, you know, board that actually gave me the idea for this and I absolutely love it. See, the thing with this as well is, instead of cutting the piece that's 11 inches by 15 inches, I can cut it 22 inches by 15. So essentially two tiles together so I could make a bigger piece, more elaborate piece on there. Um, I've still got all these little off-cut pieces that I can use for stuff as well. It's just, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy, I love it. Now, by the time I did the math, by the time you get to the biggest size board you could have for a game of 40K, you're talking around 25 euros, okay? Now, it might, I say 25, it could cost you 30. By the time you've got, oh, we bought this for 50 cent, I bought that for a euro, just to add it onto one board and make it, you know, nice little elaborate. So you went to a charity shop and you bought some um, some toys, some kids' toys construction stuff, you know, so you got cranes and everything else, and you cut them into pieces and made it look like um, an excavation site that's all all the machines in ruins or something like that, just for one board. You know, you might bump the price up a little bit. But even with that said, even if it cost you 30 quid, this board that you see that, you, that I work on and you see every week, and essentially this is the gaming board before I started building this, is an eight foot by four foot piece of uh, 10 mil MDF. And that cost me 30 quid. So that cost me 30 quid, and these boards are gonna cost me around 25 quid. The difference with these boards is, I can, as you've seen just a minute ago, I can just move few tiles in the whole battlefield changes you know there's blank tiles here as well so I can take bits of terrain that I've made and just put them on here and there um, and because I use the same uh, same technique where I only have black and dry brush with um, still and drab or I use burnt umber and dry brush with still and drab it all blends in nicely now I absolutely love this I've got a few more bigger things in mind to do. Um, a lava bridge comes to mind. A communications tower comes to mind as well. I've got a lovely piece of that. I've had that for a good while now, but I haven't had a chance to get onto it. But guys, if you like this video, please hit like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications, because this is gonna get crazier. Now, until next week, take it easy guys.